book of Job and share with you how you can have victory over reversals at all times. Victory over reversals at all times. Whether that be sickness, whether that be finances, whether that be family matters, or whatever your reversal may be. Now what is reversal? A reversal is going a different direction than what you were doing. In other words, you had great health, but suddenly, boom, not so much. You were receiving blessings in business and forth, suddenly, boom, not so much. There's a lot of people in America that because of COVID have lost their businesses. Their businesses will not reopen. A lot of families that have lost a lot of loved ones throughout the world. I think they were saying today that in America alone it was like half a million people and then millions across the world who have died from this plague. And so there's reversals that's been experienced. But as a child of God, as a Christian, how are you supposed to respond? And if you will respond the way the Bible teaches us to respond, you can end up like Job, doubly blessed by God. Turn with us to the book of Job, chapter 1. We're going to look at all 42 chapters in a brief time that we're here. I assure you, you will be out on your regular time. But starting with verse 20 in chapter 1. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground in worship and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. Now folks, let me first tell you, if you're in a state of depression, don't read the book of Job you'll only get more depressed. Amen. But I pray that the Lord will bring back to your remembrance this message this morning so that if, and you may not be in a reversal right now, you might be in the best time of your life, but I guarantee you, you live long enough, a reversal's coming. God said, Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said as his followers, we're not exempt from tribulations. Now there's some people out there teaching that if the word of God is in you, then you'll never sin and nothing bad will ever happen. Well, I think life teaches you different than that. Amen? So when we begin to look at this, we've got to remember that God is the power. Faith is our access to God to get the power. Faith is not the power. Some people are trying to teach it as it is the power. God is the power and always will be. Amen? Amen. The Bible is very clear that in order for us to please God, we must have faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. How do you seek Him? You seek Him by faith. And when you seek Him by faith, He says, if you ask anything in His name, He shall give it to you. Here again, by faith. Amen. But the power and the resource is coming from God. And if you don't have faith, you got nothing coming. Amen? You've got to simply believe, amen, till your eyes finally close and you open them in heaven. Amen? <clears throat> Never stop believing. Never stop having faith. Amen? Because faith will bring you through it all. Now, in 2021 and 2020, <coughs> we've had some pretty trying years. But people experiencing reversals some have lost their hope, and that's a sad place to be when you lose your hope. We're going to look at Job. And if ever there was a man that's recorded in the Bible that suffered a reversal, it was Job. 
Job lost everything. Take this truth. Job kept his integrity. He did not sin against God, and he kept his hope in his Redeemer. Amen? Three things that he did. He kept his integrity, he did not sin against God, and he kept his hope in his Redeemer. That's the solution to your reversal. Let's notice the man Job. He was the revered one. He was such a man that the writer of the book of Job described him as a perfect man, an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed or avoided evil. Can you imagine your neighbor saying something like that to you? And being so impressed that they write a book about it. But Job went further than that. God stood up for Job when Satan accused him. Notice, and the Lord said to Satan, Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. God himself stood up for Job, called him perfect, called him upright, called him one that avoids evil. Now I want to tell you, when you got God standing up for you, you got something good going on. Amen? Amen. And we see in the Bible where God records these things. You remember Cornelius? How that his prayers went up as a, as a uh, alms unto God and a great reward was given to him. His whole family got saved. When we look at these things, God writes them down in a book. Amen? Everything that we do in our life, God writes in a book. And one of these days we're going to see the book. Now, there are some books that I like to read. I don't know how much I want to read my book. <laughs> but think about it in your own life. What if Satan came to God and God said, Have you considered my servant and add your name there? You see, God knew what Job was made of. He knew what he was made up in his mind. He knew what he was made up in his spirit. He knew what he was made up in his emotions. And he knew what he was made up physically. God knew Job could take the test. That Job could stand the trial. Now folks, let me tell you. Satan accused God of putting a hedge around Job. That's why Job served him. Isn't it nice to know that God has a hedge around you? Amen? Isn't it nice to know that God is protecting you by His grace? Amen? But when you're under test and trials, realize the God that allowed that test or trial to come is also the God who knows who you are, who knows your makeup, who knows your faith, who knows how you can stand. And God Himself said He would not put anything upon us except He would make a way of escape that we might be able to bear it. Amen? Once again, God's telling us something's coming, but I'm making a way for you. Amen? Now sometimes that's all you can tell yourself. Because with your eyes, you might not see it readily. With your ears, you might not hear it readily. But if you keep saying faith to God, God, I'm going to make it with you. God, you're going to help me make it. God, I'm trusting you. You are my confidence. <coughs> Every time you declare God to be your confidence, you're punching the devil in the face. Because he's accusing you before God. So every time you say to God, God, I thank you that you're faithful. I thank you that you are sovereign. I thank you that you're in charge. I thank you that you're in control. And act on it. Live it. Believe it. And see how much more powerful and victorious your life is. I want to tell you it's a great way to get out of depression. Amen. Just think positive. <coughs> to think that there's a better day. To keep your hope. And know that Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. Now. We've seen Job, the revered one. What was his reversal? 
the first thing that came to him was that his sons and daughters were in the house. And a wind came and hit the four corners of the house. And all of his children died. Here's a little solace though. If you'll read a little bit earlier in that chapter, the Bible says that Job sanctified his children daily and offered sacrifices for them in case they might have sinned. In case they might have had a sinful thought. He took proactive action with his children. He prayed that they would be clean before God. Now let me ask you, what kind of prayers are you praying for your family? When you pray, what kind of prayer are you praying? Are you praying that if they have committed sin, Father, convict them of that sin? Lead them to repentance? Lead them to let Jesus' blood wash them white as snow? Are you praying that God will bless your family? Amen? When I pray for my boys, I pray, Lord, bless them. Amen? Bless Josh. Bless Stephen. Bless Timothy. Bless James. I call out their name and ask God to put a blessing on them. We need to bless our children. If you have a grandma living, you need to bless your grandma. Not bless her out, but bless her. <laughs> if you got a granddaddy living, you need to bless him because folks, I've lost both of them and it's a sad thing not to have any grandparents. So bless them. If you've lost both parents, that's a sad thing. Both my parents are gone. So if you got one, love them. Bless them. Amen? Call them. Send a card. Amen? Let them know they're still loved and they're still cared for. Do you know how wonderful it is? Not so necessarily for men with their always wanting to be tied on their emotions. But when a woman goes to the mailbox and gets a card out and it's from one of her children, I guarantee you she'll tear up every time. Because maybe she was having a hard day. Maybe she was thinking about that very young one, wishing to hear from him. And suddenly a card shows up or a telephone comes. Amen? So, Job shows us what to do. Be proactive on our families. If your loved ones are not saved, you need to be bombarding heaven. And saying, Father, save them. Draw them out of darkness. Bring them to Jesus. Let them confess their sins. Let them be saved. Because I want them to be with me in heaven. Amen? Amen. And then see what God will do. See how God starts changing things. Amen? So the first thing, the first reversal He has, His sons, His daughters, all did the same day. Now we know how tough it is when you lose them one at a time. He lost 14. Boom. The second thing was all his stock and wealth was gone. The Chaldeans, the Sabaeans, they all came in and stole everything. And that, I guarantee you, Job got tired of seeing his servants run up to him. Because the first servant comes and says, Job, your kids are dead. And then the second one shows up and says, your cattle are gone. And another one shows up and says, your camels are gone. So he lost his wealth. And in those days, and sometimes today, Wealth determine your standing in the community. If you were a person of wealth, you were looked up to and respected because you were a wealthy person. And obviously, somehow, you were able to get and amass that kind of wealth. So at that point, he lost his position that he had in the community. So now he's lost his children. He's lost all of his will. And then, Job, Satan goes back to God and says, Hey, he hasn't cursed you yet. 
That's what God said. Ten curse. Still has his integrity. <coughs> Satan says, but if you let me take away, if I can just touch him. And God says, you can touch him, but you can't take his life. <coughs> and he was stricken from the top of his head to the soles of his feet with sores, boils. So much so he began to scrape the boils to try to get some kind of relief. He showed he was repentant because he sat in sackcloth and ashes. So he lost his children. He lost his wealth. And now he has lost his health. Folks, you know as well as I do that as long as you're healthy, you, you always have that confidence, I can do it again. Amen? I can, I can make it again. I know a lady, a friend of mine uh, that I used to work with, they had suffered loss and had five bankruptcies. And they were on their sixth. She still had her job that she was working, but every business her husband went into, somehow there was a reversal. But she always knew we're coming back. We're coming back. Amen? She had her health. And folks, when we have our health, we look and we have hope. But when that goes, it's a struggle. Amen? But the struggle is easier when we realize that God is walking right beside us. I like that Elvis Presley song, Never Walk Alone. Some people have tried to sing it. I was listening on Facebook this week, and there was two different other people that tried to sing that song. They can't do it. They ought to leave Elvis' this song alone. <laughs> but you'll never walk alone. You may be in your house, and it may be dark, and you might be feeling bad, but realize... You are not alone because God is everywhere present. God is just a prayer away. All you got to do is open your mouth and whisper that sweet name of Jesus and believe it and Jesus' presence will be there. Amen? Amen. I've loved those times in prayer when I had been praying and, and, and calling out the name of Jesus and suddenly it felt like somebody put a warm blanket around me. Gave me one of them Alice hugs. <laughs> Pulled me up close. And you know, somehow, that sense of God's presence made everything else look a lot different. Amen. Listen, folks. If you're breathing, you have hope. Amen. Amen. If you're standing up and not laying down, you got hope. Amen? Never, 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 never give up. Amen? Amen? And the doctors may tell us a whole lot of stuff, but folks, God is the giver of life. Amen? I love what my precious mama told her doctor when he said she had pancreatic cancer and told her she only had 30 days to live. And this was an Indian man. said, you only have 30 days to live. It's so, so bad. And she looked at him, a woman of faith, and said, you ain't God. <laughs> you ain't God. Amen? Amen? Now she did pass away 11 months later. But in that 11 months, she got all of her business in order. She called in all the children and grandchildren and gave everybody a sermon. Told them what they needed to do after she was gone on. The one thing she said is, live the faith I've shown you. Amen? Isn't it something that you can live in such a manner you can tell your grandchildren and your children, live the faith I've shown you. You have so much confidence in the way that you live, the way that you believed, that you can pass it on and say, live the faith I've shown you. Amen? Now, could we say that? We need to do some examination. Could we say to our children, and our children would say to us, you've lived the faith. It's because of your faith and what I've seen you go through and what I've seen you overcome 
that makes me have faith and makes me an overcomer. Amen? We need to do it. We need to tell it to our children. We need to tell it to our grandchildren. We need to tell it to our great children. If it's precious, uh, Sister Sarah was here. She had some great, great, great grandchildren that she was very proud of. Amen? Tell it to your children. You're the one that can bring them to Jesus Christ. You're the one that can help them with their reversals. Amen? Let them know you're praying for them. Not in a preachy manner, but in a loving manner. Amen? Not in a condemning manner. Not in a judging manner. You just simply say to them, Honey, I love you, but I'm praying that God will help you. Amen? And you know that's a that's a sermon in itself when you say, I'm praying that God will help you. Amen? Because you directed them to the one who can help <laughs> So he lost his health, he lost his wealth, he lost his children, and then his wife says to him, Job, do you still keep your integrity? Why don't you curse God and die? Imagine that. You're sitting there, you've lost everything, need comfort, and your wife says, won't you just curse God and die? Now most of us won't like much what Job did, but he did it righteously. He says, you sound like a foolish woman. Amen? God is given. God can take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And in all of that, He did not sin or accuse God foolishly. Amen? You see, here's a problem. So often when we get in a reversal, we want to play the blame game while we're there. We want to blame somebody. We want somebody to take a responsibility to why we're there. But folks, it's just life. Life happens. Bad things do happen to good people. Look at Job. Perfect. God says He's perfect. God says He's upright. God says He avoids evil. But still, He lost everything. Except His hope in God. Amen. That's what He didn't lose. That's what got Him to His place. He knew what he had came from God. That's what he said. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gave it to me. If it was in God's thing that it be gone, then it's gone. But he did not sin and blame God. And I have counseled many people and the first thing that they do when something bad happens, they get angry. And anger is not the answer. Anger is not faith. Amen? Now, it's human... You know, get angry a little bit, but then get over it. Amen? Give that anger to God. Amen? I can't tell you when you ask the question, why me? I can't answer that. And I assure you, the side of the grave, God probably won't give you an answer either. Other than the fact He knows your makeup. He knows you can stand the test. He knows you can get through the trial. Because he knows who he is. He knows he has the grace. He knows he has the mercy. And he, has the new, he knows he has the resources to keep you. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, when we realize that the world was cursed because of Adam's sin, all of it, we were living under a curse. The world is still under a curse. There are still multiple people out with sinful natures. And some of them ain't good. Some of them are just pure evil. And as a child of God, there are times that God has preveniently kept you by His prevenient grace. He's kept you safe. But at some point, it could be a very bad day. That's the test. 
You can trust them in the good times, but will you trust them in the bad times? Amen? You can trust them with all your loved ones while they're all doing good and they're all in good health, but can you trust them if one of them goes by the way of the grave? That's where a lot of people get angry is when a loved one passes and they get angry at God and they begin to blame God. And that's not the thing to do. I did. I rebelled against God when my sister, 20 years old, suddenly had a brain hemorrhage and died. And they said she had it well, since birth. I got mad at God. Why did you kill her? She was attending church. She was loving God. She was just trying to be obedient to my dad. Why did you allow that to happen to her? I was a 16-year-old boy. 16-year-old boys don't have a whole lot of purified faith. <laughs> so I got angry. And in my anger, I rebelled. And in my rebellion, I went away. Thank God for mercy that brought me back. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, rather than blame God, bless Him. Father, thank you for the grace that's going to get me out of this. Thank you for the mercy I'm going to receive while I'm in it. Thank you for the resources you're going to make me have because I will not lack any good thing. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack for any good thing. Amen? Say that, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And when you begin to proclaim and declare these promises, these statements into your hearing, it gets into your spirit. When it gets into your spirit, your faith begins to grow. And when your faith begins to grow, your hope begins to grow. And when your hope begins to grow, you're walking on clouds. Not being overwhelmed by the clouds. Amen? So here was Job. His wife, his family, the only family had that turned against him. Sometimes that happens as Christians. Sometimes our families turn against us for whatever reason. But we can't blame God. We just got to serve God. Amen? But then his friends come. Three good friends. And then they get there for seven days. They were like buzzards. They sat there and they watched him and did not give him one word of comfort. They do. The Bible says they uh, observed that he was overwhelmed with grief. But folks, when you're overwhelmed with grief, what do you need? A word of comfort. A word of encouragement. You don't need three friends, three friends sitting around you watching you. How many of you like for people to stare at you? I was always told that was rude. Amen. My mom always told me, she says, boy, it's rude for you to look at a person and keep your eyes on that person and stare them or try to stare them down. That's rude. How many of you got that same lesson? A lot of you? Yeah. But here they were. No word of come. And then when they had their mouth open, now notice the man who was in the community that wrote this blessed book saw Job's life and said he was upright and that he was perfect and he avoided evil. Now these friends had to know it also. But they were under the impression when bad things happened it was because sin was in your life. And that's not necessarily true. So the first thing that comes out of the Bible, you, you must have sinned, Job. That's your problem. They even colored it up. They had prayed to God and they felt like they were giving God's Word to them. And Job responded and cursed the day he was born. I mean, that's misery when you get to the place that you wish you'd never been born. And then have some of you been there? Get to the place in your depression. Get to your place in your reversal that you wish you'd never been born. Job was there. But even in all that state, God still spoke to Job. Amen? So here's the reversal. He lost his children. He lost his wealth. His family turned against him. 
He lost his health. And now his friends are against him. He got nobody but God. What a good person to have. Amen. Amen. Friends, I want to tell you, you can lose everybody around you, but if you still got God, you're still ahead of the game. Amen. If you got God on your side, you're still ahead. You're still a winner. You're still in the majority. Amen? Because with God comes a cloud of witnesses that encompass around you. All the saints that have gone ahead, all the Old Testament saints, all the New Testament saints who's already been tested and tried, they're up in heaven with the angels of God and they're rooting for you. Amen? In this game of life, you got somebody who's telling you to move the ball, get the goal, win the game. Amen? Don't let a few people tackling you or knocking you down or even knocking the wind out of you. Don't let that stop you. Get yourself up. Brush yourself off. And keep walking. Keep walking. Amen? Because when you walk, Elvis again, you won't walk alone. God will walk with you in the darkness. God will walk with you in the light. God will walk with you on the mountaintop. God will walk with you in the valley. I want to tell you, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's exactly what He means. Amen. And I think there's enough testimonies in here with people who have walked with God can say, Amen, preacher. That's right. God has never forsaken me. God has always been there. In my lowest